Hello everyone. Welcome to Civil Engineering and Stuff. And in today's video lecture, we are going to start a new discussion in traffic engineering, and that is traffic management. So, uh, in this topic, we are going to look into the need of traffic management. Why do we go for traffic management, and what are the ways in which we ensure an efficient movement of traffic? So to study that, first of all, we need to understand the need of traffic management. So uh, for that, we need to understand the conflict points in an uncontrolled intersection. All right. So in this video lecture, we are going to discuss about the conflict point in an uncontrolled intersection. So to discuss that, let me first of all in brief discuss about the different maneuvering that we all, we see in our daily life on a road section. So if we see that there is a traffic that is going in a certain direction, and if a traffic stream cuts out or diverges from the from the main traffic stream from the main traffic stream. That uh, a stream of traffic diverges out of this uh, movement of traffic. This is called as the diverging movement. This is called as the diverging movement. Likewise, we also observe that if this is the traffic stream that is moving, there is a possibility that we observe in our daily life that a traffic stream merges into the ongoing traffic stream and Moves in the certain direction, and when this happens, this is called as the merging. This is called as the merging traffic. In a similar fashion, if a traffic stream is going in a certain direction, then there is a possibility that a traffic stream goes perpendicular to that direction, right? And this is we call as the crossing. Crossing of traffic stream. Likewise, in a traffic stream, in a traffic stream, within this traffic stream, there is a traffic stream that weaves in between the traffic. That shows a weaving action, and this is what we call as the. This is what we call as the weaving motion. In a traffic stream, weaving means that the Traffic is going in the same direction, but it weaves out, find out its space, and move along the traffic stream. Okay, so these are the uh, most common form of uh, actions that we observe in our daily life. The, we have a diverging traffic, we have merging traffic, we have crossing traffic, and we have weaving traffic. Needless to say, uh, in these traffic stream, if there is a collision that is happening. Then the maximum impact will be at the crossing action of the traffic. Here, the impact of accident will be severe compared to diverging and merging and weaving action of traffic. All right. So, uh, in an uncontrolled intersection, when we talk about an uncontrolled intersection, intersection means when two roads cross each other. Let's say this is uh, this is road A and this is road B. These two roads are crossing each other, and when we talk about the uncontrolled intersection, this means that these two roads do not have any traffic managing devices. Right? These two roads uh, right now do not have any traffic uh, managing devices, and the traffic is free to move as they want. Now, let us take one condition that these two roads, road A and road B, are two-way. Two lane road. Road A and road B are two way two lane road. So what does this mean is that there will be a traffic that will be going in the upward direction in road A, as well as the traffic will be going in downward direction in road B. Road A. This is a two way road. Likewise for B. There will be traffic that is that is going from left to right, and there is traffic that is going from right to left. 
Now, if these situation happens simultaneously, we can observe that there are certain conflict points that emerges. Right? There are certain conflict points that emerges. So, if uh, a vehicle is going from right to left, as well as there is a vehicle that is coming from uh, from uh, top to down, so they may collide like this. Likewise, we have certain conflict points in the same road. Since it's a two-way two-lane road, there ca there can be a diverging action that can take place. The vehicle can diverge the uh, the traffic stream can diverge and merge with the the, uh, with the different traffic stream, right? As we can see here, the uh, this stream of traffic diverges from this stream and goes and meets to the traffic stream at road A. And from here, we again observe that few conflict points are created, right? Few conflict points are created. Same action is repeated for road B, and we see that again, the if the diverging action takes place. The traffic stream diverges from B and merges in the upgoing traffic in road A. Then again, few conflict points are created. We again observe few conflict points are created. This is these diverging case was happening in road uh, B. Similarly. The same scenario can happen in road A. The traffic at road A diverge from the traffic stream and can merge with the traffic stream that is going in the in uh, from left to right in road B. And when it happens again, few more conflict points are created. Similarly, the top to down road, uh, traffic from road A diverges and meets the right to left going traffic in road B. If this traffic stream wants to go A, diverges and meet, merges into the traffic stream in road B. And again, few more conflict points are created. Right? Few more conflict points are created. Likewise, there will be certain left turning traffic. Right? There will be certain uh, left turning traffic from uh, the from the traffic stream of the road B. It will, it will turn and meet with the traffic stream of road A, creating another conflict point, right? So this these conflict points are created because let's say simultaneously uh, if there is a traffic stream going in this direction, likewise there is a diverging action going on, right? So a confusion state uh, state may happen because right now this road do not have any control measure, they do not have any guidance as to uh, to safe passage the traffic. So there will be conflict points that will be created, right? Likewise, we have the diverging traffic from this uh, this traffic stream in road A, creating another conflict point. In a similar fashion, from the road B, we have another diverging uh, left turning traffic, and because of that, we have again certain conflict points that is created, right? If you see here, we have another conflict point being created. Likewise. We again have another conflict point created for road A, right? We have another conflict point created in road A. So, if you see in a two-way, two-lane road, if all the traffic is allowed to move, all the traffic is allowed to move, lot of conflict points are created, right? If you if you count all these number of conflict points, you will observe or you will see that a total of 24 a total of 24 conflict points are created and this this is just accounting for the moving traffic this is just accounting for the moving traffic suppose we add pedestrian behavior also right we add pedestrian behavior also now this pedestrian wants to cross this road in an uncontrolled intersection and if this pedestrian wants to cross this road, there is a possibility that this innocent pedestrian might collide with the moving traffic from the road B. So, a conflict point by this pedestrian may be created. Likewise, if the pedestrian gets safe 
from this conflict point there is a possibility that the pedestrian may again coincide with the with the right going traffic in road b right so again two conflict points are created likewise if this pedestrian decides to go and cross this section of the road then again you observe that two more conflict points are created right in this road a two more conflict points are created likewise another pedestrian wants to cross this road uh, section road side of road b this side of road b again he may collide here he may collide here so again we observe that two more conflict points because of the pedestrians are created likewise if this there is a pedestrian here there is a pedestrian here and this pedestrian wants to cross again possibility is there the pedestrian may collide with the moving traffic in this section of road a so if you observe if you include pedestrian behavior also in this uncontrolled intersection if we include pedestrian behavior also then 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 eight more conflict points are created so we have 24 conflict points earlier just by the uh, moving vehicles in a two way two lane road and eight more conflict points are created because of the pedestrians so if by including the uh, this pedestrian behavior the total number of conflict points increases to 32 it increases to 32 look at that so many accidental hot spots are created in an uncontrolled intersection right so many accidental hot spots or control points are created because of the uncontrolled intersection so it becomes a very important necessity to ensure that these conflict points are reduced and all the vehicles that are moving in this road section can move in a very free as well as in a very safe way right so the discussion that we did just now was for a two way two lane road right and both road were uh, two way and both had two lane road so we had 24 conflict points right this further increases if the number of lanes are increased to four in each lane and both are two way then this conflict point increases to 44 we are talking here only about the moving vehicles we are not included in this table we have not included the pedestrian crossing the intersection if the road a and road b both are made four lane and both are two way then look at that we have 44 conflict points we have 44 conflict points so you can just assume that uh, if that kind of uncontrolled intersection is created it will be a total devastation right there will be there will be loss of life left and right so it becomes an absolute necessity to like ensure uh, to have a better traffic management plan and ensure that the tra traffic is moving in a very smooth and in a very safe way okay and uh, this table this table is very important i highly recommend just learn this table by heart because in many competitive exam this this table is asked okay so uh, one of the potential way of uh, managing the traffic is by converting either one or both road as a one way road right either converting a one road or a two road into a one way road so by doing so by doing so what we do is we reduce the conflict points drastically so if you observe here that if uh, road a was two lane and road b was two lane and if both roads were two way then we have 24 conflict, conflict points but in case we convert if we convert one road into a one way uh, while another road is left to be two way the conflict points reduce to 11 only they reduce to 11 only while if both the roads are made one way the further conflict points are further reduced to only 6 the conflict points are further reduced to only 6 so it's a very interesting thing to note that just by converting 
one like one road into a one way we have reduced the conflict point less than half right and likewise you can observe in each case just by converting one road into uh, that was two way into one way we have reduced the conflict points drastically the traffic uh, interaction that we had uh, we have both we have discussed that there are crossing conflict there are merging conflict there are diverging conflict while crossing conflict is of severe intensity while your merging and diverging conflict is of minor intensity so just by converting a road into one way street we have reduced the conflict points drastically and it can be seen here also like uh, this uh, through this land diagram we can again observe that if a uh, road a is a two way road road a is two way road that is the traffic is going in both direction while road b we have now if you observe we have converted road b into one way road right both traffic are going in same direction and you can observe that now we have reduced the conflict point right we have reduced the conflict point to 11 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and 11 right we have reduced the conflict points to only 11 likewise once we have converted both road into one way now you can see both uh, side of the lanes both lanes have traffic moving in same direction right both lanes have traffic moving in same direction so only left turning tra traffic is allowed Le only left turning is allowed so we have now 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 the conflict points are reduced to only 6 right we, the conflict points are now reduced to only 6 so from this discussion up till now we can see or we can feel that converting a two way road two way uh, road into one way seems to be a very good idea right because it does reduce the traffic the conflict points drastically that is economical but that is not efficient right conversion of two way road to one way is an economical option but is not efficient why it is not efficient the reason is that by converting roads into one way will eventually lead to increase in the distance and time to reach a specific destination if we convert lot of roads into one way road then the distance uh, to reach from the original destination will definitely increase which will lead to increase in time and that will lead to increase in the fuel consumption and in case the width of the road is limited we have a limited width of road then a frequent congestion scenario may also arise especially if the roads are, are not properly planned in case of industrial uh, situated in the industrial area or government office area or residential areas right if there is a lack of pl planning then frequent congestion will be a like a like a frequent phenomena so to go uh, to convert a two way road into a one way road that should be done only in the case when traffic volume for the alternate route is available we have alternate uh, route available and there is like a very vast network of road available uh, where uh, which gives us a ample amount of alternative to move from one point to another all right only in this case the conversion of uh, of a two way road into a one way will be will be efficient otherwise it may seem to be an economical option but it is not an uh, not a efficient mode of traffic management strategy so needless to say since it is not an efficient uh, mode of uh, of traffic management we need to have certain traffic management strategies so as to we don't have to restrict the movement of traffic as much as we are doing in one way while we are maintain this uh, movement of traffic uh, and ensure the uh, safe passage of vehicles so there are certain traffic control devices that are installed on the road so as to ensure the to ensure to see the following achieve the desired purpose now these control device that we install and we are going to discuss in the upcoming lectures should have certain basic criteria 
they must fulfill certain basic uh, criteria the first one is that they should be able to grab the attention of the driver which is in motion right in a, on a in a road section we have uh, the vehicles that are in motion so during that motion only the this traffic control device whatever the traffic control device should be should be able to grab the attention and while the driver is in motion after the attention is is seeked the traffic control device should convey the desired meaning right if the there is a control uh, traffic control device that wa that wants to convey that the traffic should stop then the same meaning uh, the driver who is in motion who is traveling on the road at a design speed should be able to should be able to gather the meaning successfully and once he has uh, understand the meaning of the uh, of the traffic control device he should have the ample uh, time available to respond to whatever the traffic control device is uh, is saying and along with that this whatever traffic control device that we are we are going to discuss should respect the road user right they should not distract the uh, the attention of the of the vehicle of the drivers unnecessary or or they should not uh, disturb the concentration of the driver that are moving on the road let's say we have ins installed a traffic sign and the reflective index uh, of the traffic sign is so much that it brightens so much that it like the glare uh, blinds the driver that is moving on the road right and so that is not a desirable thing okay so whatever traffic control device that we install on the road should serve these following purpose it should be uh, it should be sufficient enough to gather uh, the attract the attention of the driver should convey the meaning and uh, the driver must have uh, the sufficient time to react to whatever the uh, traffic control device message is and should respect the road user so what are these control uh, devices so we have traffic signs that are installed on the road to convey certain messages we have traffic signals we have road markings and we have traffic islands so these are the most commonly used traffic control measures to, so as to ensure this safe and smooth uh, movement of traffic on the road section okay and in the upcoming lecture we are going to discuss each in detailed manner okay so this was all for this video uh, i hope the video lecture was useful to you and if so uh, like the like the video subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and uh, thank you for uh, watching uh, have a nice day